Hey guys, Stealth here. Today I got something different for you. This is World of Warships. I managed to get into the closed beta test and I have been really, really enjoying this game for the last 24 hours. Um, I haven't managed to get this far into the game yet. There aren't that many ships available yet. you got a couple of tech trees. Um, and in case you're not sure what I'm talking about, this is pretty much the naval version of World of Tanks. So instead of using tanks to destroy the enemy, uh, playing in groups of 15 versus 15, this is the naval variant where you play in groups of 10 versus 10. And initially you're playing 10 versus a, a group of 10 bots because they don't want you to, uh, they don't want to put you up against players yet. And um, this, the one I'm looking at, is the Airy class. It's the first class of ship that you get. Now I wanted to go over some of the elements that I've found in this uh, game so far. As you can see, it still has beta work in progress because it is the beta test. This game is not finished. You're not going to see all the features that uh, they're going to be implementing over the next couple uh, months at least and probably years. But let's have a look. Um, down here in the bottom we got the ship selector and this is where you see all the ships that I currently have in my port. That's what they call the garage versus World of Tanks. Over here you can see the Airy. I got the Samson, which is a tier 2 ship. You can see that here with the two bars. Three bars is the St. Louis and is my tier 3 cruiser. Now you can see several different icons here. Um, you can see a sort of a ship icon where it says cruiser just below Airy. And there's a sort of diagonal bar through that icon. That means that this ship is a cruiser class. The next type of class that I have, and that's the only other class that I have at the moment, is a destroyer. And you can see that it does not share the same icon. Um, it's a sort of smaller ship icon without the bar across it. I haven't really figured out all the icons yet, simply because I haven't made it that far into the game yet. But with these icons you can very quickly tell on the battlefield what kind of ship you're facing and what kind of probable armament they have. Now, upgrading ships is something that works a little bit different if you're used to the interface from World of Tanks. In World of Tanks, for example, you could just upgrade the tracks. You could upgrade the engine, um, the gunner, sorry, the, um, the gunner port, the turret. All these different elements of the tank could be changed. For a ship, an overhaul is usually quite a lot different. There are many more elements that have been changed um, and because of this they decided to adjust the way that you adjust your ship. So, for example, the main battery, I have already upgraded the ship fully, so I'm going to downgrade it now for now. And you can see that um, the gun turrets have now changed. I'm now using 127mm gun turrets. So this is a pretty big upgrade to go from 127mm to 152 And you can see exactly what the change is in the specs. You can see that I will lose a bit of rate of fire, but I will gain uh, 180 degree turn time, I will gain HE damage and armor penetration damage. So mounting those, and you can see that the turrets have improved. Now the same way it goes for the uh, version of the ship, if you will. Um, this area has two versions, they're both called the area 1936, which I don't think is entirely accurate. I'm not a, uh, a ship historian, so if you have any more information on this, please fill me in on it. But um, the way this works is that not only, for example, a bit of armor plating has been changed, like it would have been on the World of Tanks turrets, for example, but uh, the whole ship has gotten more armor plating, um, they may have rearranged some things on the ship. So if I switch it back to the airy base version, that's the one you're starting with, you can see some very, very subtle changes. Now, it varies per ship how obvious these changes are, because some ships have major overhauls and some just have slight differences. So switching it back to the Airy 1936, say, upgraded version, and you can see that I gain a bit of combat capability, which is uh, hit points. You gain, a, or the armor stays the same, there's no difference there. Survivability goes up a little bit, and maneuverability goes up, and that is definitely significant, because the more maneuverable your ship is, the more difficult it will be to hit. So mounting that, and you can see that some of the elements of the ship has been changed. Another element that you can change here is the engine. And with the engine, of course, um, you gain more speed. Now for this ship, I don't have any engine upgrades, but um, I believe it's the St. Louis. No, the Samson maybe. 
Now I haven't unlocked any of the ships which can gain improved engines yet. So the engine can be upgraded on some ships and that will increase your maximum speed. I'm currently sailing at a maximum of 21 knots which can be translated into about 37-38 kph. And finally you got the fire control system. This is um, more or less a fire control system in the sense that it controls the way you fire but the specs change in the sense that they adjust the rate of fire, the range of fire, sorry not the rate of fire, the range of fire um, and how far you can spot stuff usually. So for example the change for the Samson class destroyer I had a fire control system that had um, no firing range increase of course because that's the upgraded version that has that. The firing range is 7.8 kilometers on the main guns for this ship with the base mark 3 mod 1 fire control system. With the mod 2 you suddenly jump your range up to 8.6 kilometers so your ship actually gains range of fire. And that's something that um, comparing it again to World of Tanks is something that you just didn't have. The guns in World of Tanks are uh, usually so powerful that you can shoot all the way across the map anyway if you wanted to. You just can't see that far. So that's the upgrade section. Um, in order to unlock new systems and new ships, you also have to go through the tech tree. And the tech tree does not have that many countries yet. We only have the USA and Japan. USA has um, aircraft carrier lines leading all the way up to the Essex. They have the cruiser, which ends in the Dim-1 line, and they got the gearing class destroyer. You can even see some premium ships, although we cannot buy these yet, because um, buying gold at this stage in the game is not possible yet. But these are premium ships which probably gain a little bit more income, and which can be used for crew training, although um, crew, again, is not in the game yet. Now you can see a couple of these, and over here on the top it says premium ships in this column destroyers, cruisers and aircraft carriers. The USA currently does not have any battleships so if you want to go battleships you're gonna to have to visit Japan. Japan doesn't have any aircraft carriers so it's a bit of a square off between the aircraft carriers from the USA and the battleships from the Japan. And what you can see here is that Japan also has the cruiser line and the destroyer line and even some premium ships. Now the USSR is also in here but they only have one ship, and that's the premium tier 3 Aurora. Now it's a famous ship of course from the October Revolution, but um, since they don't have a tech tree yet, and I believe that this will be the next country that they're going to roll out, it might be worth investing in one of these um, as we get gold, as we get the avail availability of crew, um, so that you have a crew that you can train up and be ready for, let's say, the introduction of the USSR line. Now another element that I wanted to highlight here is that um, I'm now a tier 4 player. I believe this is the way that you should describe it. It's a tier player. It goes all the way up to tier 8. Uh, tier 8 is not available yet, so they're still working on that. But you start out at tier 1, and at tier 1 you can only do co-op battles. So you don't have to be afraid that you're going to be facing another team of total noobs or have a group of noobs in your own team. Instead, you're only fighting a group of bots with human players. And this will allow you to learn the game, see exactly how everything works, how your ship responds. Um, it gives you a bit of low pressure practice in order to get some free XP and upgrade your ship. Now then at tier 2, <coughs> you can join the random battles and you get a credit bonus for getting to rank 2. And the progression of getting to rank 2, 3 and 4 etc. is just by doing battles. Of course, the better you do, the faster your rank will go up. Tier 3, you get daily missions, and this means that you can get a mission that, uh, for example, says you need to destroy two ships in two consecutive naval battles, and that will gain you, um, I don't know, 25, 30,000 credits. And number 4 is where I'm at. You can get free experience. Um, that's nice, but I don't have any free experience yet, because the free experience mechanic doesn't seem to be introduced that well yet. You do get a bit of free experience, uh, but you cannot convert the experience that you have laying about on your ships. So as you can see, it's still very, very much in the development stages. Now, um, you also have the uh, availability of looking for a division, which is what we would call a platoon of three ships in World of Tanks. 
and you can just switch between random battles and co-op battles here later on and I expect that um, as World of Warships get developed we're also going to see some more different variants here uh, team battles maybe as you have in World of Tanks eventually clan wars will probably be introduced um, I'm expecting they're going to be releasing that relatively soon after the launch because it's a great way to get more players involved and as you can see um, right now there aren't that many players online there's only 794 as I was playing uh, yesterday evening there were 4,000 people online and that's pretty much the maximum I've seen so far the first battle per day also gives you a bit of extra experience you can see that most uh, my ships here have a times 1.5 marker down here at the bottom this means that I'm going to be getting a little bit more experience. Now the Samson has been, um, I believe I've completed the development on this ship. Yeah, I got all the modules done, but I haven't completed research yet for the, Wickles, uh, the Wix class destroyer. I can do that now, in fact, so let's go and research this ship. Research it for 1900. I want to research it, I don't want to buy it yet. And my Samson has now acquired Elite status. And this is pretty much compared to the Elite status in World of Tanks. Where you can just gain free XP and boost your crew training on the ships that you have eluded. For now it is not that relevant to keep ships that you have eluded. Unless you just really really like the ship. Because as I mentioned crew is not introduced yet. And um, it doesn't work that well yet with free XP. You can gain free XP. You can see that over here on the top right I have some XP that can be converted to free XP but if I click it uh, it says I don't have enough piasters and that's the premium currency it's gold in World of Tanks and it says purchase piasters to use for conversion if you go to purchasing um, you just find that you cannot do that yet so free XP is nice but for now it's not that interesting yet so, let's jump into a battle. I'm going to be using the uh, Samson for this because I really like the fast ship these, uh, that these destroyers are. And you can see that this destroyer that I'm using, the Samson, has a main gun. Um, or actually several main guns. One on the bow. This one has a very nice turning radius. Of course it cannot turn directly to the aft. I got a couple of guns mounted on the uh, port and the starboard side of the ship. These ones I have four torpedo tubes on every side, two on the bow, sorry, two on the port flank, and two on the starboard flank. And torpedoes can do a tremendous amount of damage. And then I got another main gun on the rear of the ship. Now at this tier, I don't have to be afraid yet of any um, AA, so any um, anti-aircraft armaments that I need on my ship because there simply aren't any aircraft yet. You're only going to see those at tier four. The last element I wanted to highlight in port is the starboard, or the, <laughs> the right side of the screen, where you have um, the type of ship that you're using. This is the Samson class destroyer. Tier 2, I have 761 experience on this ship, which can later on be converted to free XP, of course. Survivability is 10 points, and of course the more armor and the more hit points you have, the more the survivability rating is going to go up. It also is dictated by the amount of armor, and you can see that um, this ship does not have a lot of armor, 6 to 13 millimeters. If you compare that to my tier 3 cruiser, this ship has 6 to 76 millimeters of armor. It depends of course where you hit it, some elements of the ship will be much much more heavily armored than other elements. Artillery is your main battery, <coughs> so those are the main guns of this ship. It says that um, you can get a little bit more info on them and with this you can see how much damage you can do. Uh, maximum armor penetration shell damage is 1940. Firing range is, uh, is 8.6 kilometers and as I mentioned this can be influenced by upgrading your gun control system. Torpedoes is the amount of damage and the amount of torpedoes that your ship carries. Now there's no um, ammo amount as you would have in World of Tanks. This means that the ammunition is just going to be infinite, or at least for now, they might change that later. And the same goes for the torpedoes, so you don't have to worry about firing off your torpedoes and then um, having to go back to port. You just have to wait a couple of seconds, and I believe it's 22, 23 seconds for torpedoes for them to be resupplied. And then you can fire them again. And you can see that uh, my main battery 
does a maximum armor penetration damage of 1940. Torpedo does a lot more damage. Maximum damage of 6000. So it's really significant that um, you use these weapons. I have a grand total of one AA gun and it is mounted here on the bow of the ship. This is it. Um, don't expect this thing to save you if you're facing an oncoming wave of aircraft. You're going to need a lot more AA guns to do that. Maneuverability is how fast your ship is. This ship has a maximum speed of 30 knots. Compare that to the Airy class which has 22 knots. You can see that it's quite the significant difference. Turning radius is also important. It's a little bit like you would see in World of Tanks. And uh, the faster you can turn your ship, the more likely you are to be able to bring all of your weapons to bear onto the enemy. Rudder shift time is how fast it uh, takes to maneuver the rudder. So how fast it is to take the rudder from one side of the ship to the other side of the ship. And that also impacts your turning radius and how fast you can turn. And then finally concealment. This is um, dictating how far away you can be detected by visual range and by air detection. So you can see here that I can be detected by other ships at a range of 5.9 kilometers. Um, air detection is a lot less. Aircraft can detect my ship at 3 kilometers and I think that um, this is of course a little bit in reverse because you would be expecting aircraft to be picking up ships a lot sooner. But I think it's a balancing mechanic for now to make sure that aircraft aren't overpowered. If you would have an air detection range which is much much greater than this, you're going to be in trouble because the aircraft carriers would just completely dominate all other ship classes with their aircraft. Anyway, enough of the chatter, let's go to battle. The battle screen has also changed a little bit. You can see how many ships are in the queue. Over here you can see I'm a tier 2 class ship. There are currently two cruisers and three destroyers waiting and I'm a destroyer that's in this queue. Um, it looks like the people at tier 6 will have to do a lot more waiting. There are three ships waiting and there's even a tier 10 battleship online. So that is one of the Japanese ships. If you think that this is taking too long you can always leave the queue and switch instead from random battles back to co-op battles. The game doesn't need as many players as it would for random battles. And I think that a co-op battle is also a great way to test out your new ship. Because especially if you're, for example, jumping from uh, the first ship, the Airy, to the Samson, which is suddenly a lot faster and has torpedoes, and you don't want to jump right into the deep end with your new torpedoes, um, you can just switch to co-op and make sure that you have a solid grasp of how these weapons work. Okay, I'm going to pause the video here, and I will be seeing you as we're doing some battle. Okay, welcome back. Time to get into the game itself. As you can see, I'm with here with my team. Um, a little bit of explanation on the elements of the game. Top, you see the amount of ships that are in the game. We're doing an 8v8 here, and it's a domination class match. In a domination, you have to capture the circles in the middle. It's a bit like capture the flag or uh, the domination you're used to from War Thunder. And these games also gain points by killing off an enemy. Destroying an enemy will give your team 60 points. Losing an ally will cost your team 90 points. Over on the left, you can also see more info about my ship. I'm a Samson class destroyer. There's the uh, play icon of the destroyer again. I have 9100 hit points. I'm currently sailing at full speed, 29.5 knots. And my main guns, which are uh, guns 1 and 2, are currently facing the enemy. Now, talking about the enemy, there are some targets already. And always be sure to lead your targets. If you don't, you're not going to hit them. And unfortunately, I gave him not enough lead. Now, he also didn't give me enough lead. There you go, target hit. And you can see the amount of damage that you did. Now I'm going to try and hide behind this island in order for him to get a bit closer so that then I can fire off my torpedoes. But I'm hoping not to crash into this island for now. And here is a ship. This is a destroyer. Now I need to be careful here because I just had a very slight collision with the island. And here come the torpedoes. I was expecting that, so I'm backing the hell up. 
Trying to evade these torpedoes. And that was close. It was too close. Switching back to the guns because my torpedoes are mounted on the sides of my Our ship. <coughs> and I cannot use those right yet. I have not captured the A sector yet, so there's probably more ships in here. And I have to be a bit careful about the amount of shipping that is in here, because currently I'm alone here. Switching back to full forward. <coughs> and as you can see now I'm actually starting to do some damage, but there's more torpedoes on the way. Now I could try to fire at that ship with my torpedoes, but I doubt they're going to hit before that ship manages to get away. And you can see that someone has deployed a smoke screen over here. That is probably that destroyer that's back there, at 6.3 kilometers out. And again, more torpedoes are coming in, but this time I'm going to return fire. Firing a first salvo and a second salvo. Let's hope that this destroyer is not fast enough to escape those torpedoes, but I think he's going to get away with it. And in the meanwhile, I'm also taking fire from my port flank, so I'm trying to get the hell out of here. I have absolutely no interest in staying out here for too long, because I simply not survive it. First salvo, and my second salvo, unfortunately, cannot be brought to bear. Yeah, I got one torpedo launcher out of action. You can see that this ship is slowing the hell down in order to avoid my torpedoes. And it looks like he's going to get away with it too. Yeah, the torpedo just crossed right in front of the bow of the enemy ship. So instead I'm going to fire off another salvo. And another one, in case he's trying to get away. And over on the other flank I got the other torpedo, the destroyer again. First salvo, second salvo. And you can see some torpedo icons. Let's see, hopefully... Just get a hit on this ship. I doubt I can get away with it though. Yeah, torpedoes missed again. So we're just going to have to do this the old fashioned way. I'm also going to deploy a smoke screen, which is going to make it a lot more difficult for the enemy to fire and find my exact location. But I deployed it too late and they can still see me. Time to do a little bit of zigzagging to make sure that it's going to be more difficult for them to actually find me. And here's a cruiser that's struggling with a torpedo attack. I'm kind of worried that the ship's going to get hit. Torpedoes ran out of fuel just before they managed to hit that ship. So he was lucky to get away with that. Now you can see that my ship is almost completely destroyed. I have 147 hit points left. I'm still cruising at full speed. And over here on the bottom you can see that all of my guns are still available. I have not been destroyed yet. Uh, my guns haven't been destroyed yet either, so that's very, very good news for me. And um, in the middle here you can see the armament. I can fire HE rounds, I can fire armor penetration rounds, I can fire torpedoes. Use my repair crews. Um, repair crews though only repair damage and can be used as a sort of fire extinguisher crew. And over on the right you got the smoke screen, and that's what I just deployed here to make sure that I can escape from this very, very dangerous situation. Unfortunately though, this smoke screen is not protecting me anymore. So I'm going to have to try and get into the safety of the cover of these islands. And I have to do so quickly before this destroyer manages to take me out. And I really expect him to do that. Now, firing off some more torpedoes. You can see that over here on the bottom, my Our two and four torpedo launchers are just being resupplied. It's going to take them a while to be rearmed, and uh, that means that I can fire off a salvo of torpedoes from either flank every 20 seconds, and that's very, very quickly. Now, let's try and get some more fire onto this ship, and very, yeah, there you go. I was going to say, I'm very surprised I was still alive. Now, my team is doing a great job. You can see that six of the enemy uh, ships have already been destroyed. Only this destroyer and this cruiser, and that's these two ships, are still left. And my team still has five ships remaining. Four cruisers and one destroyer. And with it, you can just quickly click towards the uh, friendly shipping and see how well they are taking out the enemy. 
Now some more information. Top right, I got 12 shots and the, sorry, I got 12 hits done, and I set one ship on fire. Some other ships are also trying to join the fight. This is Captain Obvious. <laughs> Great nickname that. Um, a final element that I hadn't discussed yet is the bottom right side of the screen, and this is where you can see the mini map, of course. Now, unfortunately, I got myself blown up in this match because I sailed into trouble head first. I got 12 hits on target, as mentioned. I set one ship on fire and I got destroyed by Elvis Dock. Received 16,849 credits, 423 XP, and 14 free XP. And you can then go to team score, see how well you did compared to the team. And as you can see, I did pretty damn terrible. Mostly because I was trying to explain what was going on and fight the battle at the same time. And in the detailed report, you can see what kind of shells you fired, how many HE damage you did, how many armor penetration damage you did, how many torpedoes you launched. Um, I launched 18 torpedoes, didn't hit anything. I need to work on that lead time, but as I mentioned, I have been playing this game for less than 24 hours, so I'm still very, very new to it. Aircraft, um, didn't get any aircraft hits. Um, damage caused by ramming, zero. No base capture points received, and no base capture points reduced. Enemy warships that I managed to hit are um, these t uh, these two Chester class cruisers. I did a bit of damage to them. Did not do any critical damage though. Did not set. Um, I think I set one of these on fire. Again, didn't destroy any aircraft. Starting time 9:38, and the battle only lasted seven minutes. Time I actually spent in that battle was six minutes, so it only lasted for one more minute. And you can see that my distance traveled is 23 kilometers, which if you compare that to World of Tanks is going to be a major difference. Because in World of Tanks if you travel uh, 3 kilometers it's going to be much. Damage received can also be seen. I took a large amount of damage from HE rounds. Uh, managed to dodge all torpedoes fortunately. And credits and experience is the one screen that you might be used to from World of Tanks. I don't have a premium account, but as mentioned, those things don't really work that well yet. Got a bit of um, credits here. I scored a bit of experience, and that also got me some free experience. That's the golden star. Now, an interesting feature that they added is back to port or battle on. And with battle on, you're going to use the same ship again into a new battle. And this is a very nice addition, because this will mean that you don't have to go back to port, select your ship and click battle again. It's skipping that step and making it a lot faster to go back into the queue. For now I'm going to go back to port, uh, because I want to do a bit more highlights on the ships that are yet to come. I'm currently working my way down the American line. I have the St. Louis and I'm working towards the American aircraft carriers, because I'm really curious how those ships are going to perform. And later on I might also be going down the destroyer and the cruiser line, but we'll see about that. Final note before I end the video is that I have my own website, which is worldofwarshipsguides.com. Link to it is in the description down below, and I'll be putting up regular, and probably very regular videos, with guides on the game, um, guides and reviews on the ships, and just regular gameplay. Unfortunately, the game currently does not have a replay system yet, so you cannot send in your replays insofar as you have access to the closed beta test. Um, but again, that's something that's probably going to get added later. For now, I hope you enjoyed this first impression of mine of the game. Um, I can really, really see this being my new favorite game. Of course, along with Wargame, but I'll be doing a bit less of that. So, I hope you liked watching this first impression. If you did, please hit the like button down below. And if you're not subscribed yet to my channel, please feel free to do so. I'll be trying to get at least one World of Warships video up every day. Because with the way that this game is developing, as I mentioned, it could easily be my new favorite game or favorite addiction, depending on the term you'd like to use. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the battlefield.